start a little Q and A with um, our director. Thank you so much for coming to watch, and thanks for staying. I'd like to introduce Elizabeth, who's going to come out and join us. Woo! Let's get started. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but uh, let's start with the one most people ask. How did the project get started? Um, I have to say, I, I've known Elizabeth for a long time. We met when she was a visiting professor, and a friend was in her dance class. I was at one of her events, um, and it was a... <laughs> It was a benefit dinner, and there was a performance that was going to happen, and she turned to me and she said, do you want to drop the bowling ball? And, and I said, what? And so in the middle of the event, she said, go over there now. So I climbed up that truss up 35 feet, and then Zaire, who was at the beginning of the film, was holding his hands, and he went like this, like, drop it. And I thought, if I drop this ball, I'm going to kill you. And they dropped two bowling balls on either side of me that smashed down onto the cement blocks, and just the cement blocks smithering and smashed everywhere. And he's going, drop it. <laughs> and so finally I dropped the ball and my heart was racing. And I came down and I just, I thought, I really want to know why I feel like this. Why the other people who dance with her feel like this. What we get from going to this work. And I wanted to explore it further. And we just looked at each other that night. And magic happened. We said, you know, let's make a movie together. We kind of combined it and... And, and that's the, this is my effort to answer some of those questions. Well, I, I followed Kat. You know, what I was remembering looking up. One, you know, to climb a truss. It's not nice and neat like a ladder. There's wires and cables and interruptions. Well, it, it's thin. Yes, yeah, I mean, tech guys and girls climb them, but it's not for the every pedestrian climber. It, so I was nervous watching her climb up that height, and, and I'm thinking, don't let go. I don't think I said to you, don't let go, because you think that would be kind of ancillary, but it's critical that you, you, you don't let go, because people do let go. <laughs> don't know why, but they do. And then when she had to crawl over on the cross truss, how did you get the bowling ball? I don't remember. You can't crawl over there. Who gave you the bowling ball? After you climbed. Anyway. <laughs> so... Everything so simple ends up being so complex. But anyway, to drop a bowling ball at a human is a very kind of anti-intuitive thing to do, usually not wise. So I thought, wow, she's never going to drop it. We'll be up here all day. <laughs> right, it was all a big dare. That's what I like to say about this movie, that if she dared me to drop the ball and I dared her to make this movie, and the dancers dare every day to keep falling and keep getting up. So... That was why we made the movie. Amazing. All right. Questions out here? I'll let you think about it for a moment. Because I know you have them. Well, right here. Elizabeth, uh, Catherine, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful film that is poetic and challenging, like Elizabeth's work. But my question has to do, once you've mastered not being afraid, not being scared, master the physicality of your body, what role at that point does emotion play? As described just a minute ago about excitement, but emotion, not feeling, emotion, what does that play? The question is what role does emotion play in performance once you've mastered the body part of it? Well, well I think first, I mean, it's a profound question that would require a lot of thought. Um, you, you're never. Thirty words or less. You, you never. <laughs> you never. Right. Exactly. You never master your body. You, you are never completely trained. It's an ongoing situation. And in terms of the idea of fear or the difference between emotion and feelings, I think the dancers are. If you're up close to them when you saw them do these moves, they are shaking. You know. You're, if you're a wise action hero, you're never not scared. Um, while we wait for the next one, I do want to say at 4.30 today at the convention center, Elizabeth will be signing her book, How to Become an Extreme Action Hero, at the Barnes & Nobles station. If you want to come by and get a book, and she'll sign it. And on Monday night um, at the Contemporary Gallery here in Austin, 
wonderful place. If you haven't been, she's going to be giving a talk um, that starts at 5. So please come by the Contemporary Monday night at 5. Also, this screens again tomorrow at 1130 at the AMC Violet Crown Cinema. Um, so you can tell people to come then, and it's playing again. And we'll be there tomorrow, too. And it's playing again on Thursday after we've gone. Elizabeth, you've had your work, obviously, photographed and filmed uh, often, shown in, the, in this. How do you feel about this film, how it captured your story, one, and also a question for both of you. Uh, when you're making a documentary, you always shoot just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage, and, and you get down to that rough cut that's three hours, and then you got to get to that cut that's an hour and a half, and it's the, it's the process we call drowning kittens, because at that point, at that point, every every scene, you just love every scene, but it's got to go, you know, so so it's so difficult, so I'd love to hear for what, from you about how you felt this captured the essence of what you do, and also what got left out of the film that you'd love to, uh, that was hard to miss. Well, I'd say the expression drowning kittens is a little pugilistic. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> Um, it, it makes me cry every time because as you can see, a lot of the stories, I think it's beautiful and it's the deep-throated version of what happens at Strap and the trajectory. And I couldn't be more honored that this, I would have left out the dirty, nasty bits. That's why a person can never tell a story about themselves accurately. But to, that is the truth of what happened with Strap and it's, it's not pleasant. And many times I do stand there and go, I'm, I should be arrested or something. But um, if you're gonna work with extreme action, you, you can't leave those parts out in Captain, plus the utter beauty of how you captured the angles of the different events. Um, I saw my work in a completely new way. Thanks, it really, I think, you know, I said from the beginning, Elizabeth, this is gonna be something, there could be a million movies and I'm gonna end up making just one and I hope you'll stick with me to the end. And I do have to thank her for loving this film because it does involve a really complicated view, I think, and that it makes us look at ourselves in a different way. I think it challenges, it challenges me and I hope it challenges viewers in the same way to ask yourself questions about where you're willing to go and what you're willing to do and how you feel about those things and who you're gonna take along with you on the ride. And just to really challenge your fears. I think, and I, I love the honesty at the end when she said, I was scared out of my wit, <laughs> which is the worst thing that an action hero can feel. <laughs> but you want to get something done already, get it over with. And she doesn't want to. She wants to keep living in that really dangerous, tricky, sometimes ugly, often extraordinarily beautiful place. And that was what I tried to catch with the film. Um, what did I leave out? Well, I could, you know, I. I could watch Elizabeth on film for hours and hours and hours, and I feel like the things that she has to say, you know, they're all these amazing little bits of, you know, whatever people say, whether they say pearls of wisdom, whatever, but these little lines, I still hear them, and they're all so metaphorical, even though they're incredibly literal for the moment that she's speaking about. Um, and I love that every time I hear it. So. You know, it was hard. It was hard to cut down that dinner party. It was hard to cut down any of the um, the verite scenes, the dinner party, the scene where she's just really going through her work in the loft with me and looking at pictures and reminiscing. I could have just kept that whole three-hour interview just straight through because it goes, it's great. And then the doctor's office. I mean, there's a lot of different moments, the rehearsals, which are so um, unscripted. Um, so there was a lot. There were also beautiful moments with the dancers. We are going to try to, we have about four or five scenes we're going to try to add to the DVD. One I will recount now is a story Elizabeth tells about when she was smaller. Maybe you should tell it about the fires. But the one, the one scene that I really didn't want to take out that we took out was that she used to like fires. She liked lighting fires as a kid, and she took these matches, and she took a friend, and they went to the barn, and she lit a little fire, and then she put it out, and then she lit it again, and then she thought, I'll let it go until she cries. Like, I'll see how far I can push her. And then, and then, and then, but it's like what you're doing with us, and we value it. That's why we're here. So, I mean, that is what I feel like. I feel like it's like, I keep, it's, I keep going all the way to the point where I almost can't stand it. And then the end of that story is kind of incredible because she puts out all the fires and the girl dries her tears and they go down and they're walking away and they turn around and the barn bursts into flames. It burns to the ground. So that's it. But I mean, 
<laughs> she didn't know. And the, but you know, I mean, the, what are the things that bring us around? It kind of goes to Jim's question: is sort of what are the emotions? I think that in some ways, the reason that I understand that you can embrace this film, you know with all of its complexity, is that what you really are interested in is the physics, is in the brain part. You're so unsentimental. And if you were slightly more sentimental, you probably wouldn't like the movie. And, you know, I feel like you help me be less sentimental about everything. But my children is what I'm the most sentimental about in the world. Just, like, thinking about relationships and people and what we're getting out of these things, you know, this can help us sort of hone in. In the end, you know, in the end, it's just the end. So make the most out of thinking through these things, right? <laughs> back, back with the uh, in the black right there. There's this The question is whether uh, there are any dancers that are maybe estranged from the company. I think, you know, at first I thought I was going to stick with the dancers that are in the company. Um, and I feel really lucky and, and really relieved and happy that I found Hope and Deanne to speak with. Um, there are dancers, I think Deanne puts her fingers on it. She says, you know, this is what everyone's worried about when they leave. When you leave, you're never going to have it again. And the only way to cut the tie is to kind of push away and distance and disavow and maybe say, you know, it's not that important or why would you stop doing it? And nobody wants to take it upon themselves except Hope and Deanne were so articulate about how and why they were able to make that transition. So I know there are dancers out there that have very complicated relationships to Elizabeth. I think partly because of this notion of emotionalism or sentimentality. I really am not interested in getting into the weeds of resentment and anger and people's own psychodramas. Like, I just, that's not what this movie's about. Those exist and they're valid, but, you know, there is some of that out there. I know it. And, and it, frankly, and Elizabeth kept trying to talk about it sometimes. You know, there were times she'd be like, I can talk about that. And I was like, I know, but you know what, I don't, I don't want to get into that because what I wanted to do was take us more straight to this place where we were indicted and we were feeling that we had the visceral response to the work. Um, do you want to say something about X dancers? Well, yeah, there's some really mad people out there. Um, but you know, I have my duty goes to the, the the majority of people, you know, and I've got to take care of them. We have health insurance policies. Or the disgruntled dancers will always exist. I, I can't please everyone all the time, and some of them have real real arguments with me, and they could come to me and uh, talk to them, talk to me about it, you know, rather than posting it on, on Facebook, but that doesn't happen, but I'm 100% happy to engage in any of those conversations, should they come my way. All right, we're down to last question, so who's got a good one? You've had your hand up for a while, go for it. Yes. Who is who is in charge of those stunts, or are you just going for it? Uh, well, no. We 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 used we brought in some air rams and jerk vests, which are specifically stunt people's um, devices that are usually used in movies when you shoot someone and they fly forty feet sideways. But that stunt, the stunt people are a completely different category than what we do. We're actually inventing actions based on the new machinery that's in the room or the new forces we've devised um, as a condition to contend with. There's no mind or body out there that really completely comprehends. They look at us and they think, oh, you're not being crazy enough. And we look at them and say, oh, they're not trained. So, Is this so. a competition? Is it what? Is this in competition? This film is in competition. Make sure it is in make competition. Sure you vote. And I uh, just wanted to say a quick word about the future of the film. Um, I just uh, also want to say we're going to be in the Sun Valley Film Festival and then in next week and in a couple of weeks in the Cleveland Film Festival. We're going to be in Full Frame Film Festival. Our sales agents are Film Transit. Um, Diana Holtzberg is here. And our PR people are Inclusive PR. They're also here. And then we have a theatrical that will start at Film Forum in New York on September 10th. So um, we're looking for television and things like that, but that's sort of the lay of the land. We have Twitter and Facebook and all of those things that my young teenage daughter is in charge of. <laughs> um, and so follow us on those things, please. And Great. Thanks. Thank you both so much.